in the heart of eastern uganda where lush green fields stretch far and wide a groundbreaking initiative took root transforming the way rice is grown and harvested welcome to the captivating journey of the reduce reuse recycle rice initiative for climate smart agriculture r4icsa a visionary project funded by the ikea foundation implemented by kilimo trust with naro nakri and bugizadi as supporting partners the r4 icsa project is an evidence-based project to identify best practices and is focusing on protocols in kenya and uganda the project is in its phase two with protocols in rice legume integration promoting upland rice vermicompost trial biochar trial and intermittent watering trials among the protocols mentioned is the rice legume trial with six sites in Tororo, six sites in Ngenge Queen, five sites in Upper Queen, and six sites in Mutaleja with one of our protocols in Tororo ready for harvest. This trial has, uh, we're using a randomized complete block design where we are having two, testing two rice varieties called Nerika 1, Nerika 4, and Nemuche. But, uh, we are planting in sequence with the uh, <clears throat> Mark, Mark IV soya bean as a legume. And uh, well, we hope to do this trial for two or three seasons. Um, this trial has performed very well. Nemuche and the Nerika rice varieties were adopted because of their early maturity. But we've also introduced Wita 9 which is typically a wetland rice variety. And that one takes slightly longer. It takes about 130 days to mature. The Nerika, Nerika 4 and Namuche, which are short term and uh, highly recommended for sequential cropping, have already matured at about 100 days. So that's a very good observation that they can be adopted in the sequential system, which will be followed by a legume and subsequently uh, uh, a, a, a cereal rice within a cycle of less than 12 months. This project aims at promoting sustainable agricultural practices through integrating rice with a legume. The legume is to provide nitrogen and nutrient needed for plants to grow. And the unique thing with this protocol or trial of rice legume integration is its promotion of ecosystem resilience and also enhancing farmers' livelihoods through diversifying. A farmer is able to have a legume, that is soya, and also a cereal, which is rice. And besides that, we shall improve soil health when we add these legumes into the, in, into the rotation. At the same time, we are able to cut on over dependence on the chemical fertilizers. The legume integration never used to be the case, but for Tororo, we have chosen soya bean because there are various legumes. But the soya bean has been successful and went through the water stress, but we are even able to harvest. But if it was beans and ginats, it was just, would just be zero. We have here a, a plot of soya. Some we put uh, winter nine. Some we put uh, uh, Nerika four. Other blocks we put Namuche. As I talk now, Namuche and Nerika is ready for harvest when uh, winter now is uh, in a stage of booting, it is not ready like other varieties. So the treatment where we are now is, uh, is Nerika 4. It has performed so well than never before because the interventions they used was really favoring. You can see it has very large heads and so many panicles. It has done unique, unique things. And even the grains are very, very too much filled. The rice legume integration has a lot of immediate benefits. One of which is uh, providing food security for the farmer. The farmer will have a carbohydrate source will also have a legume which will give proteins for the family. The sequential system also, since we are producing three crops in a year, 
you'll have a higher income from the same piece of land. And if a farmer gets higher income, then of course we ex expect uh, improved livelihoods within the homesteads and of course economic development for the farmer from their technologies. It is new for us here, but uh, some of us we have seen now. We know that if we, if we plant soya and uh, rice in, uh, in the same garden, uh, we can uh, harvest all. We hope to promote this practice to farmers through collaboration with Kilimo Trust so that farmers are able to adopt these sustainable practices. Um, we are yet to find out the impact of this rice legume integration once we rotate for the next season. But for now, it's evident that the good management practices that have been applied are able to give us such a good yield. And it's also evident from selection of the varieties. We focused on the upland varieties, that is Nerika 4 and Namche 5, and our lowland variety, that is Wita 9. And I'm also grateful that through the farmers that have been providing labor, they've been able to learn on the different rice sustainable practices that we've been putting on ground, like timely weeding, top dressing, row planting. Many of them have testified to that. So we hope to scale this out to the farmers once we are done with the next session. The major challenges that we have seen in this trial is uh, the cost of labor. Labor, rice growing is labor intensive. It's expensive to carry out. Attracting labor has been quite a bit of a challenge. But uh, the beauty about it, if you plant rice like we planted in rows, the subsequent operations become easy. It's initially difficult at planting, but the other operations are quite easy. We've not had a lot of challenges with pests and diseases which are common with farmers because we are using varieties which are tolerant. The Nerika and Nemiche rice are tolerant, and the, the rice variety also used. The, the, <coughs> the soya bean is also tolerant to most of these common pests and diseases. Uh, the other challenge we had here was heavy rains in June, end of June, because this was typically an upland crop, but we had some bit of floods of rains. But it's very impressive that, uh, of course, rice tolerates the rain, but we observed that even the soya bean was quite tolerant to the floods, which we had for about one, two weeks. Uh, from our observations, and the interactions with the farmers who, work, who have been working on the field, they've picked a lot of interest in this trial. And uh, I would therefore recommend that uh, NARO and together with the Klimo Trust should put up demonstrations within the communities to demonstrate some of these technologies to their farmers. So we need to encourage more farmers and upscale some of these technologies to other farmers. Because like uh, we have about 35 sub-counties here in Tororo, but about 30 of them depend on rice farming. So in, for this particular case, I would request at a later stage, we need the funders and Klimo Trust to think of upscaling and we train other more farmers so that the technology is adopted. Um, our applause, our thanks go to Kilimo Trust uh, I care foundation for funding this, the farmers who have enabled it to be a success, the partners, specifically Bugizadi, Dr. Kaira, the district production, district project associate and the demo host farmers. Thank you very much. I really thank Klimo Trust for extending such technologies and I pray for success because I've already seen the success. It is only remaining how to inform others who have not been able to see these technologies. But I'm proud of the technologies. Even me personally, I am a trained agriculturist. I have added value in my work, my understanding in rice farming. I thank Limo Trust for what, they, what they, they have done for us in Tororo. I request them to add more training or workshops to these people, this area, to know what to do. 
The farmers embrace the ratooning trio, learning to optimize water usage, reduce waste, and maximize yield, all while preserving water resources. I'm Dr. Arthur Wasukira, a senior research officer with the National Crops Resources Research Institute, and particularly I'm attached to the Cereals Research Program. Now, we are partnering with the Kelimo Trust in uh, conducting validation studies towards, to respond really to the climate change uh, challenges of this country. Uh, and also to validate and develop information which we believe will support our policy makers in the uh, development of uh, use, uh, land use within the wetlands. So where we are, uh, we are at one of the uh, research fields and this is particularly Ngenge in the Quen area. And uh, this happens to also fall in a new irrigation uh, uh, scheme, the Atari irrigation scheme, because the country is moving towards utilization of, uh, uh, of wetlands, but only in irrigation schemes. Now, where we are is uh, what we call the, uh, we are evaluating different ratoning methods. Ratoning basically means you cut back a crop and it regenerates itself for another season. And uh, in here, we are exploring the use of uh, about five different ratoning methods. And these will be compared together with the normal rice growing system where a farmer grows one season, uh, plows again and uh, continues and starts a new process. So the thinking is that through ratoning, actually there is a lot of uh, advantages, one of which is saving costs, because then the costs of uh, land preparation, uh, cultivation, clearing, uh, buying new seed is not there for the next season. Besides, it shortens your growth period, which will respond to the challenges of uh, climate change, which is the shortened uh, weather, I mean, rainfall patterns and the extended dry periods. So ratooning actually gives you a break and uh, acts like a shock absorber when there are challenges within uh, the environment. But more specifically, on the scientific side, ratoning methods actually reduce on what we call the greenhouse gases, which are damaging our ozone layer. And this is a challenge world over, and one of the methods is to mitigate the challenges through use of uh, proper cropping methods. Most importantly is that because you, the, the ground is covered for a longer period of time during uh, the growth period, there is reduced evapotranspiration, which is the loss of water. And yet, as we know, water has become a scarce commodity. So in Uganda, there's not been much ratoning, but we hope, to, uh, to part, uh, we hope this work can give them the push to help farmers to therefore meet this uh, challenge and reduce on their costs of production. In here, we have about uh, four different varieties of rice, because we don't know yet which is the best for ratooning methods. So we are evaluating four different ratooning, I mean, four different rice varieties. Uh, we have uh, the recently released Kafasi 39. We have Wita 9, which is known to the farmers. Uh, we have Narrow Rice 1, which is a Ugandan uh, variety. And also we have uh, uh, Kafasi 87, which is under evaluation, you would say. The Biocha trial, which is a natural and carbon rich substance created through pyrolysis of organic waste, was tried out in different farms, enabling the Biocha lay to retain water and nutrients in the soil. I'm trying to, to do some experiment here Biocha, a plain and a fortified Biocha. Then we see the, 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 the outcome of the plain biochar and a fortified biochar. Under this experiment, I am with people from Wigzad who are coming here every time to see what is going on. Is it going on well or is it not going well? I'm encouraging my fellow farmers also to come and they do what I am doing here. The R4ICSA project ventured into the VAMI compost trial so as to undertake a regenerative, recycle, reuse and reduce strategy to dumping the rice straw but putting it into productive use. Together, we have 
nadala ebintu byetu nda byabulijjo ngebisweva muchere no busawente tubitabira wamu ne tubivundi sawamu okumala anga wiki satu we mala kuvunda bulungi then it let them box box esoka yino era awo tuteka mu ne worms with the vermicompost the farmers discovered the wonders of earthworms they are diligent workers beneath the soil these enrich it with nutrients paving the way for healthier crops worms is no ziamba okuria nadala emere sangwa mo mubusawente ne ne bisubi ne bibiranga byonda tola babisubi bya mchere era tola babusawente ebisigalira bibera bigimusa ebigimusa ebyo tubitwala mu nimiro kati tulugezesa kijja kusinzira ti tuteka mu buzitoki mu buli katundu ka kenimiro kale nolecho tukoze nyo kubanga kati ngabo ola ba boxi so far eh season eno bo mu zama zo kutambula okuva mu boxe soka kati zili mu boxe ya kubiri era kati mu boxe yo kubiri era bo jikwata ko onzo kulaba anti zili kumpi okumaliza okuyu okule mu boxe eno eh era bo mu zizu no kato zilaba kati oluvanyuma lokuja wana kungulu bo mu zizu no tugenda te okuteka ko boxe yo kusatu atenga tuleta biri byetu atabula obusewente ne nebisubi ebiva mu chere kati wetumala okuteka uh, ngale ya zimukaga oluvanyuma tugenda okukungula bino eh kavundirono oba ebigimusa bino okubitwala mu nimiro nga tugezesa okulaba anti ne tuteka mu bunjishi mu likafo ke nimiro kati ekigenda okutukolera kitugenda okutambula nacho kubanga tusubira anti kino kati kijja kutuonya okugula fertilizers obwesente nyingi atata labika the r4 icsa project has also promoted upland rice through trials to showcase its potential of growing rice without the need for excessive water proving that even the most challenging landscapes could be transformed into thriving rice fields With the looming pressing concern of water scarcity, the project also undertook a trial to find the perfect balance of optimizing water usage without compromising the health and yield of the rice crop. So what we have uh, with us at the moment is uh, evaluating what we would call the intermittent watering regimes. And in here we are comparing two particular uh, water regimes where in summary it's about provision of water and then uh, withdrawing water when the plants do not actually require a lot of water. Uh, there are three trials within the, this field. So we have one major treatment where we are using the farmer's common method where he has water in the field all season round compared to another where it's uh, alternate wetting and drying. We have short periods of dryness with uh, a, another short, followed by a shorter period of wetting over the whole season production. And then another one where we think in the middle of the season, you just withdraw water for a short period of time and then the crop continues. Now, in uh, doing that, we are comparing all those against three common varieties. And this also serves as a demonstration, really. We are introducing the new uh, 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 rice varieties into, uh, into the region, one of which is an aromatic one. The other is a, a commonly a recently released one, Kafasi 39, which is aromatic, narrow rice one, which is also one of our own, and then the farmer's own rice variety, which is Wita 9. So we are trying to evaluate how the three varieties respond under different watering regimes. And then it has been documented, really, that uh, when you withdraw water and control its availability, it actually also enhances the health all greenhouse gases are reduced, which normally damage our ozone layer. So in, if we can adapt some of these technologies, especially the intermittent watering regimes, it means more water will be available for production, but at the same time, we are reducing our negative effects on our environment, and yet without affecting the productivity. 
My name is Rachel Ajambo Msasizi. I work with Kilimo Trust as a country team leader for Uganda. And uh, in Uganda, we are implementing uh, the reduce, the reuse, the recycle, a rice initiative for climate smart agriculture. This project is, fund, is a five-year project funded by IKEA Foundation. And uh, we, ha we are now in year one of implementation of this project. This program is quite exciting for us because it looks at uh, aspects of regenerative agriculture that uh, uh, many programs right now are trying to incorporate in the value chain development. We are looking at the rice sector as a, as a vehicle for, to agro-industrialization uh, in Uganda and uh, we are looking at also job creation. Uh, so we are developing innovations and uh, innovative products that can be uptaken by private sector. Uh, products like biochar and uh, its use uh, in, uh, in improving productivity and also uh, helping crops to weather climate vagaries, like for example, extreme drought. Uh, and we are doing this uh, in, in rice and in coffee. So we are doing this for rice uh, in uh, Butaleja, Butaleja district, uh, Tororo district and Quen. And in Quen we are working in Ngenge uh, irrigation scheme. In Butaleja we are working in Doho 2 and Doho 1 irrigation scheme. And in Tororo we are working uh, in uh, smallholder farmers fields and also uh, promoting upland rice uh, um, uh, production. For us as Kilimo Trust, this project is really key as uh, it, 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 it is going to contribute to fulfilling one of our strategic objectives of uh, looking at sustainable communities, uh, uh, sustainable development uh, for communities. We would like to thank uh, IKEA Foundation uh, for giving us the opportunity to not only fulfill our mandate as Kilimo Trust of why we exist, but to also uh, uh, giving us the opportunity to contribute to such an important uh, topic such as uh, climate change adaptation, especially at farm level. Uh, we also want to thank our partners, um, that we, our implementing partners, uh, uh, the National Agricultural Crop, Research, uh, Crop, Research, Crop Resources Research Institute, uh, especially the rice breeding program, uh, led by Dr. Jimmy Lamo. We also want to thank uh, 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 our, um, our partners, uh, Buginyanya, the Zono Agricultural Research uh, and Development Institute, uh, for working with us uh, uh, because these are the two research institutions under NARO, the National Agricultural Research Organization, that are actually enabling us uh, to, to implement this project. A gratitude of thanks to the IKEA Foundation for funding this project and to Kilimo Trust for implementing the project.